chapter nineteen of a book of fairy tale foxes this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by kate fallis a book of fairy tale foxes by clifton johnson the fox the wolf and the cheese at the foot of some high mountains there was once a small village with a road entering it from the east and this road was joined by one from the south on the village borders one summer night when a round full moon was shining a wolf came trotting along the eastern road i must get a good meal before i go back to my den in the mountains he said to himself it is nearly a week since i have tasted anything but scraps there are plenty of rabbits and hares in the forest but they are so swift and i would need to be a greyhound to catch them and i am not as young as i was i wish i could dine on that lady fox i saw a fortnight ago i would have caught and eaten her right then but her husband was near by and i did not want to fight two such active sharp-toothed creatures well i am going to see what i can pick up in this village while the wolf was talking thus to himself the very fox that he so desired to eat was coming along the southern road and she was saying the whole of this day i have listened to the clucking of those village hens till i can keep away no longer it is the sweetest of all music when one is fond of fowls and eggs as sure as i live i will have some of those hens this night just then she reached a little plot of grass where the two roads joined and she lay down there under a tree to rest soon afterward the wolf came along and saw her and she turned her head at the sound of his footfalls and saw him it was too late for her to escape and she suppressed her fear and made a pretense at friendliness is that you neighbor she said politely i hope you are well i am as well as any one can be who is very hungry the wolf said and his eyes glistened greedily but what is the matter with you a fortnight ago you were as plump as heart could wish i have been sick the fox explained and i am so thin that my very bones rattle but you are still good enough for me the wolf said and he started toward her with open mouth what are you doing the fox cried stepping backward what am i doing the wolf retorted i'm going after my supper and i shall eat you in less time than a rooster takes to crow oh you are always joking she remarked anxiously never removing her eyes from the wolf i am too hungry to waste time joking the wolf said with a snarl that showed all his teeth i want to eat you not to talk to you remember that i have children at home the fox said pity a poor mother and she wiped her eyes with the tip of her tail but the wolf showed plainly that her appeal did not move him and that his patience was about exhausted so she hastened to ask him to grant one last request what is it the wolf growled in this village there is an old well the fox responded and its owner stores cheeses in it two buckets hang from a pole above it and i come frequently and descend in one of the buckets into the well and bring away with me enough cheese to feed my children my request is that you let me go and make one more good meal off the cheese before i die i'd rather like some cheese myself the wolf said lead the way and we will go to the well so they went on together but as they were creeping softly into the village the fox made a sudden leap over a wall 
hoping to elude her companion however he sprang over after her and was instantly at her side i think i had better curb your desire to jump by taking a bite out of your haunch he said with a menacing snap of his teeth the fox drew back uneasily be careful or i shall scream she told him that would rouse the village and the wolf had no desire to have her carry out her threat presently they entered a courtyard and there was the well the fox looked down into it and saw the reflection of the moon big round and yellow in the water at the bottom how lucky she said to the wolf a huge cheese the size of a grindstone lies down there look look did you ever see anything so beautiful never the wolf answered as he peered hungrily into the well you have only to go down in one of these buckets to eat your fill the fox informed him i will wait my turn here oh that is your game the wolf said with a grin no you can't escape me by any such trick you must go down yourself and bring the cheese up there was nothing the fox could do but obey and she climbed into the bucket down she went to the bottom of the well and at the same time a bucket on the other end of the rope went up the bucket in which the fox descended hit the water with a splash but did not fill for the well was nearly dry the cheese is even larger and richer than i thought the fox called to the wolf then hasten and bring it up the wolf ordered but it is so heavy that i can't the fox said you will have to come down and then we will carry it up between us and how am i to come down the wolf asked get into that other bucket which is right over your head the fox replied so the wolf with some difficulty climbed into the bucket he weighed at least four times as much as the fox and he went down with a jerk and his weight sent her to the surface with equal rapidity as soon as he understood what had happened he upbraided the fox very angrily she had leaped out of the bucket and was now looking down at him good-bye she said sweetly i hope you will enjoy the cheese then she went off to a neighbouring hen-house where she secured several fat chickens as she was on her way home she said to herself i wonder how mr wolf is getting along i'm afraid i left him in a bad plight but i see that the sky has clouded over if there should be a heavy rain the other bucket will fill and sink to the bottom of the well and his bucket will go up at least it may end of chapter nineteen Chapter 20 of A Book of Fairy Tale Foxes. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Cal Taylor. A Book of Fairy Tale Foxes by Clifton Johnson. How the Cat Outwitted the Fox. Once upon a time, a cat and a rooster agreed to live together. So they built themselves a hut and a rooster did the housekeeping while the cat skirmished around and got food for them. Every day when the cat left the hut, he said to the rooster, Lock the door as soon as I go out, and don't let anyone in until I come back. One day, while the cat was away hunting, a fox came rapping at the door of the hut. Little rooster, he cried, let me in. Pussy told me not to, the rooster responded. Again the fox rapped open the door he shouted i tell you pussy ordered me not to the rooster said but the fox kept asking to be let in and at last the rooster grew tired of always saying no and opened the door in rushed the fox seized the rooster in his jaws and ran off with him 
Then the rooster called, Oh, pussy dear, the fox is here. He holds me tight. I'm faint from fright. Unless you're quick, my bones he'll pick. The cat heard the rooster calling, and he chased the fox till he overtook him. Then he made the fox release the rooster, and the two friends went home. On the way, Puss gave the rooster some good advice and said in conclusion, Now keep out of that fox's jaws in the future, if you don't want to be killed altogether. Another day, when the cat was out foraging so that he and the rooster might have something to eat, the sly fox again came rapping at the door. Dear little rooster, the fox said, pray let me in. No, Mr. Fox, the rooster responded. Pussy told me to keep the door shut and locked. But the fox kept on asking and asking till at last the rooster let him in. Then the fox rushed at the rooster, seized him by the neck, and ran off with him. At once the rooster cried out, Oh, pussy dear, the fox is here. He holds me tight. I'm faint from fright. Unless you're quick, my bones he'll pick. The rooster's call was heard by the cat, who ran after the fox and compelled him to let his captive go and gave him a sound drubbing. On the way home, the cat scolded the rooster roundly and told him never on any plea to let the fox in again. He is no friend of ours, the cat declared. All he wants is to eat you. Not long afterward, the fox came once more to the hut when the cat was out hunting for food. Dear little rooster, he said, open the door. No, Mr. Fox, Pussy told me I wasn't to do so, was the rooster's response. But the fox begged and begged so persistently that at last the rooster opened the door. Instantly, the fox caught the rooster by the throat and ran off with him, and the rooster shouted, Oh, pussy dear, the fox is here. He holds me tight. I'm faint from fright. Unless you're quick, my bones he'll pick. The cat heard the rooster calling and gave chase. He ran and he ran, but this time he could not catch the fox, and he returned home and wept bitterly because now he was all alone. At length, however, he took his fiddle and a big sack and went to the fox's hole. He sat down near it and began to play and sing, fiddle dee dee fox listen to me four daughters have you a little son too so fiddle dee dee all come out and see who fiddles here for you the fox's older daughter said to her father daddy that fiddler plays very nicely i'm going to see who he is out she skipped but pussy was watching and the moment she appeared he caught her and popped her into his sack Again he played and sang, Fiddle dee dee, fox, listen to me, four daughters have you, a little son too. So fiddle dee dee, all come out and see who fiddles here for you. Then the second oldest daughter of the fox skipped out. Pussy caught her and popped her into his sack, and he continued his fiddling and singing until he had caught all four daughters and the little son too. The old fox was now left alone. He waited and waited for his children to return, but they did not come. At last he said to himself, I will go out and call them in, for the rooster is roasted, the soup is ready, and the porridge is on the table. It is high time we had something to eat. So out he went, and the cat grabbed him and shoved him in the sack with his children. Then the cat went down into the fox's hole and drank all the soup and gobbled up all the porridge. He looked about for something more to eat and saw the roasted rooster lying on a platter beside the fire. Come, shake yourself, rooster, Puss said. So the rooster shook himself and got up, and he and the cat went home together. They carried the sack along, and when winter came, they had some nice fox skins for their beds to keep them warm. None of their wild neighbors ever troubled them again, and they lived in their little hut in peace and plenty for the rest of their days. End of chapter 20。e r t w of A Book of Fairy Tale Foxes。This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Cal Taylor. A Book of Fairy Tale Foxes by Clifton Johnson. The Fox, the Bear, and the poor farmer. 
Once upon a time there was a farmer who was so poor that he did not own any horses or oxen, and he had to do his plowing with two cows. One morning he was plowing in a field that bordered the forest when he heard among the trees a great noise of rustling and crackling and of growling and squeaking. He left his plow in the furrow, crept softly into the woods, and peered cautiously through the thick underbrush. There he saw a huge bear wrestling with a little rabbit, and the sight of two such ill-matched creatures contending seemed to him so funny that he laughed loud and long. The bear heard his laughter and was very angry. He let go his hold on the rabbit and strode to towards the farmer, growling savagely. What do you mean laughing at me? he asked. The poor farmer was now as much frightened as he had been amused a moment before. He could not answer a word. I'll teach you not to laugh at me again, the bear snarled. I'm going to eat you and your two cows. The bear was rushing at the farmer with wide open jaws when the trembling man found his tongue. Oh, please, Mr. Bear, he cried in terror. I, I couldn't help laughing. I really couldn't. I beg you not to eat me. I will never, never laugh at you again. No, you will not laugh at me again, the bear said. You won't have the chance. I am going to eat you right now. The farmer fell on his knees and with tears in his eyes besought the bear to spare him. But the more piteously he entreated, the more fiercely the beach declared that he should be eaten. Finally, the farmer said, I see that I can expect no mercy from you, and I will only ask the privilege of living until evening. Let me have the rest of this day. I beseech you, Mr. Bear, so that I can plow and sow this field. Then my family will not be without bread to eat when winter comes. To this proposal the bear gave a sullen consent. Then he shambled off and was soon lost to sight in the forest, and the farmer returned to his plowing. About noon a fox who was passing that way stopped to speak to the man. Why are you looking so sad? the fox inquired. I surely have reason to be sad, the farmer answered. This morning I heard a great racket nearby in the woods, and when I went to discover the cause of the noise, I found a bear wrestling with a rabbit. I could not help laughing, and that made the bear so angry he was going to eat me at once. I begged for mercy, but he would only grant me the rest of the day, and he is coming back here this very evening to eat me and my two cows. If that is all you are mourning about, you need grieve no longer, the fox said cheerfully. I can tell you how to save your own life and the lives of your two cows as well, and you shall have the skin of that bear for a warm rug in your house. But how can such a miracle be done, Mr. Fox? the farmer questioned. What will you give me if I tell you, the fox asked. At first the farmer did not know what to offer, but presently he agreed to give the fox nine hens and a rooster. Very well, the fox said. Now listen and do just as I tell you. When the bear returns this evening, I will be hiding in the bushes. I will make a blowing sound, just such as the hunters make when they blow their horns. The bear will ask you, What is that? You must answer, The hunters are coming. The bear will be frightened and beg you to conceal him. I see you have a big sack here in which you brought your seed. Tell the bear to crawl into that and not to stir. Then I will come out of the bushes and ask, what is in your sack? You will reply, some sticks of wood. I will not believe you, and you will say, hit the sack with your axe. You must then seize your axe and strike a mighty blow into the bear's head that will kill him at once. The farmer was pleased with this advice, and he agreed to follow it. Everything happened as the fox had arranged, and the farmer and his cows were saved. Did I not tell you I would rescue you? The fox said. Learn from this, my friend, that wit is better than strength. I shall come to your house tomorrow morning for those dying hens and that rooster. Pick out the fattest fowls in your flock, and take care that you are home, or you will be sorry. The farmer loaded the bear on his wagon, hitched his cows to it, and drove joyfully home. Then he ate a hearty supper, went to bed, and slept soundly. Very early the next morning, when the farmer had scarcely opened his eyes, the fox knocked at the door. 
I want that rooster and nine hens, he shouted. Right away, Brother Fox, right away, the farmer responded. Just give me time to dress. But it happened that he had two dogs who were in the habit of staying in the house at night, and they went sniffing at the door and got a scent of the fox. Immediately they began to bark. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hello, farmer, the fox cried anxiously. What's that I hear? You haven't a hound in there, have you? Yes, uh, two of them, the farmer answered. They sleep under my bed, and now they have scented you and are trying to get out. I can hardly hold them. Oh, Mr. Farmer, don't let them go, the fox exclaimed. Hang on em till I can get away from here. Never mind the nine hens and the rooster. You can keep them. When the farmer opened the door, the fox was disappearing over the ridge of a neighboring mountain. The farmer laughed heartily, and if he's still alive, he may be laughing yet. End of chapter 21「22を読んでいるのは、私たちのことを知っているのです。私たちのことを知っているのです。私たちのことを知っているのです。私たちのことを知っているのです。私たちのことを知っているのです。私たちのことを知っているのです。私たちのことを知っているのです。私たちのことを知っているのです。私たちのことを知っているのです。One time there was a proud fox who was trotting along the road soon after sunrise on a summer's day when he overtook a prairie chicken. The prairie chicken looked very young and simple, and the fox thought that here was a good chance to secure a nice tender morsel for his breakfast. Good morning, he said, and tried to get up close to her. Good morning yourself, the prairie chicken responded, sidling away from him. How are your folks? the fox asked. Just middling, the prairie chicken answered. How are yours? Oh, fine, the fox replied. I'm glad to hear that, the prairie chicken said. I don't know that I've ever seen him or you either before. What have you been doing since planting time? Just running around and enjoying myself. But I wasn't learning all that my daddy knows, the fox told her. Surely you don't claim to know all that your daddy has been finding out since he was turned loose on the world, the prairie chicken said. Yes, I do, the fox declared. If there's a slyer fox in these parts than I am, I agree to pin back his ears and swallow him without sauce or seasoning. For gracious sake, the prairie chicken exclaimed. I'm telling you the truth, the fox said. When it comes to slyness, I don't take a back seat for anyone. Well, and what have you been doing yourself? Nothing in particular, the prairie chicken answered, and she hung down her head and looked as ashamed as if all her tail feathers were pulled out. Never since I left the egg, I've been busy running after my mammy and getting the bugs and seeds she finds. I haven't had time to learn anything except how to hide if I see a man with a gun or a beast with a hungry-looking tooth showing. That last remark disturbed the fox some, for he had a hungry tooth himself. He hoped she had not noticed it, and he hastened to turn her thoughts in another direction. So, you know, just one way to hide, he said. I've got dozens of ways. Good Lord, I can tell you ways of hiding from now until sundown. But what is your own little way? The prairie chicken was quite overcome with the learning of the fox, and she replied hesitantly, I just get underneath the dead leaves. Uh, of course, a uh, part of me often sticks out, but that doesn't matter because my feathers and the leaves are exactly the same color. I call that a pretty poor way of hiding, the fox remarked. Yes, the prairie chicken agreed rather testily, but it won't do me until I can fly. Then I won't need any tricks at all. The fox was starting to make another brag when some hounds came into sight. At once the prairie chicken caught up a dead leaf and rolled with it, just as if the wind were blowing her along. She got out of the path and in among the grass and brush. So she escaped, but the hounds caught the fox, and his brush now hangs above the chimney piece of the man who owned the hounds. The brush was all that the hounds left of him. End of chapter 22 
Chapter Twenty Three of A Book of Fairy Tale Foxes. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Devorah Allen. A Book of Fairy Tale Foxes by Clifton Johnson. How the Fox and the Crab Ran a Race. Once upon a time, a fox was walking on the seashore and met a crab. "'Crawling thing,' the fox said. "'Did you ever run in your life?' "'Yes,' the crab replied. "'I very often run from the mud here to the grass yonder "'and from the grass back to the water.' "'Oh, fie!' the fox exclaimed. "'That is no distance to run. "'How many legs have you?' Eight. the crab answered. "'Why, if I had as many legs as you have,' the fox said, "'I could run like the wind. "'You are really a very slow, stupid creature.' "'It is ridiculous that a person with a whole row of legs along each side should run so slowly.' "'Well,' the crab said, "'I challenge you to run a race if you are not above matching yourself against a dull-witted sluggish animal like me. "'But I am much smaller than you are. Suppose we go and weigh ourselves. "'If you are ten times heavier than I am, of course you ought to run more than ten times faster to win the race. "'However, never mind about the weight. I know you are swift, but that is just because you have such a fine tail and hold it so high.' "'If you would allow me to fasten something to your tail so it would stay down, "'I think you could not run any faster than I, even if you do weigh so much more.' "'Have done with your talking,' the fox snorted contemptuously. "'Do as you like. "'For whether my tail is up or down, I have no doubt that I shall beat you without any effort at all. "'Your many legs and your stupid head do not go very well together. "'If I had your legs and my own sense, not a creature on earth could outrun me. "'As it is, there are none that can outwit me. "'Even among mankind,' "'Such is my reputation that they have a saying, as sly as a fox. "'So do what you choose, stupid one.' "'All I ask,' the crab said, "'is to fix your beautiful tail so it will stay down. "'Then I shall surely win the race.' "'Oh, no, you will not,' the fox retorted. "'You can fasten my tail down, but just the same. "'I shall prove to your dull brain that you never had the least chance to win. "'How do you wish that I should hold my tail for you to make sure it will stay down?' "'Just lower it so I can hang something on it,' the crab said. "'All right,' the fox agreed. "'Only don't keep me standing here all day.' "'I shall not be long,' the crab promised. "'And as soon as I have finished, I will call, "'Ready! Then you are to start.' The crab crawled behind the fox, caught Reynard's bushy tail with his pinchers, and shouted, "'Ready!' Away sped the fox, and he ran and ran till he was tired. But when he stopped, the crab, who had all the time clung to his tail, was there right beside him. "'What's the matter with you?' the crab asked. "'I thought you said you could run ten times faster than I. "'You are not even ahead of me.' "'The fox panted for breath and hung his head in shame. "'I feel as fresh as if I had not run at all,' the crab declared. "'Let's race back in the same way to where we started.' "'No,' the fox said. "'I don't care to do any more racing with eight-legged people.' "'And he went away into the forest, "'hoping he never would see the crab again. "'End of chapter 23《ハッピーフォーアブコフェリテイルフォクセス》。This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Book of Fairy Tale Foxes by Clifton Johnson. The Fox with a Sack Full of Tricks. Once upon a time it happened that a cat was searching for mice in the woodland when she saw a fox coming toward her. I must speak to him, she said to herself, and I had better greet him very politely. He is clever, and he has experienced in all the ways of the world. It will be well to keep on as friendly terms as possible with him. Good morning, dear Mr. Fox, she said. How do you do, and how are you getting along in these hard times? The fox, full of pride, looked at the cat for some time, undecided whether he would deign to answer or not. At last he said, "'Oh, you poor whisker-wiper, you piebald simpleton, you starveling mouse-hunter! What has put it in your head to ask me how I'm getting on? I wonder that you dare to do it.' "'I meant no offence,' the cat responded. "'You are wise, and I am simple. I am slow in thought, while your wits are keen and quick. I only venture to go a short distance from home, and so have not your opportunities to acquire knowledge, for your travels take you far and wide. 
let us be friends and i beseech you to share with me some of your wisdom pooh pooh the fox sneered share my wisdom with a foolish cat however i am not selfish and i don't mind telling you a thing or two that you perhaps may find of value sooner or later thank you the cat said i shall treasure whatever you see fit to tell me well then the fox continued what sort of education have you had how many arts do you understand only one the cat replied meekly and what might that be the fox inquired i am almost ashamed to tell you it is such a poor little art the cat said i don't doubt it is poor enough the fox observed with a scornful sniff nevertheless i would like to hear what it is why if you really want to know the cat said hesitatingly the art is one of escaping the dogs when they run after me i can climb a tree and save myself is that all you can do the fox said and he snorted contemptuously as for me i am master of a hundred arts and i have a sack full of cunning tricks also truly i pity you come with me and i will teach you how to escape the dogs without any laborious tree climbing just then a huntsman came riding along accompanied by four hounds the cat was too frightened to wait for the fox to give her wise advice and she ran nimbly up a tree nor did she stop until she had perched herself on the topmost bough where she was completely hidden by the twigs and leaves the fox remained on the ground down below and she called to him mr fox open your sack full of tricks open it quick or those fierce hounds will catch you but while she was speaking the hounds seized poor reynard and they held him tight oh mr fox the cat said you are caught in spite of your hundred arts and sack full of tricks while i with my one art am safe had you been able to climb up here your life would not be forfeited end of chapter 24「Chapter twenty five of A Book of Fairy Tale Foxes. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Adam Wilkins in March two thousand seventeen. A Book of Fairy Tale Foxes by Clifton Johnson. Chapter twenty five Reynard and His Adventures. Once upon a time, a fox lay peeping out of his hole on a winter's morning. There was a road in sight not far away, and by and by he saw a man coming along on it, driving to a market with a load of fish. That reminds me I haven't had breakfast, the fox said. Some of the fish on that sledge would just suit me. I think I can play a trick that will make the man give me a chance to help myself to them. Then he ran down a convenient hollow that allowed him to get into the road some distance ahead of the sledge without being seen, and there he stretched himself motionless by the roadside. Pretty soon the sledge reached him, and the driver pulled up sharply. Aha! A dead fox, he said, and he jumped out and tossed rain out on his load. The man got back on his seat and drove on, and soon the fox cautiously wriggled to the rear end of the sledge, threw off two nice large fish, and jumped off himself. Then he took the fish in his mouth and trotted away to the forest. There he met a bear, who stopped and asked, "'Where did you get those fish, Mr. Fox?' "'Oh, not far off,' the fox answered. "'You know the stream in the glen where the elves dwell. I just stuck my tail through a hole in the ice there, and these fish caught on and I pulled them out.' The bear in those days had as long and as fine a tail as the fox, and he said, "'Well, if those fish would hang on to your tail, I suppose some would hang on to mine.' "'Yes, certainly, grandfather,' the fox responded. "'The fish haven't much to eat these days. "'Dangle your tail down in the water and they will surely hang on. "'But you would have to sit patiently a long time. "'Could you do that?' "'Don't talk nonsense,' the bear snarled. "'Of course I could. "'Remember you will spoil everything if you are in a hurry,' "'the fox said as the bear shambled away towards the glen of the elves. "'Bruin found a hole in the ice and thrust his tail deep in the chilly water.' The weather was cold, and ice was forming rapidly. The sun set and it grew dark, and the bear said to himself, I have had enough of this sort of thing. Fish or no fish, I am going home. 
but to his dismay he found that the hole in the ice had frozen over, and that his tail was held as if in a vice. To add to his alarm, the elves just then discovered him and began shouting to each other, Here is a bear in our glen! Drive him away! Drive him away! Instantly he had swarms of the little people all about him, and each one was armed with a tiny bow and arrows, and a spear hardly big enough for a baby. Their arrows and spears, though small, could sting, as the bear well knew from past experience. And in his fright he gave a mighty tug that broke his tail short off. Then away he scampered out of the glen as fast as he could. His fine bushy tail was gone, and ever since that time all the bears have had short, stumpy tails. The bear wanted to punish the fox, and he went in search of him. Reynard understood perfectly what he must expect, and he said to himself, Unless I keep out of that fellow's way, I shall lose something more than my tail. Then he began speaking to his feet and other parts of himself. He would ask a question and pretend that the part addressed answered, though of course it was he who did all the talking. The conversation was like this. What would you do, my feet, if the bear was seeking my life? We would run so fast that he could not catch us. What would you do, my ears, if the bear was seeking my life? We would listen so keenly that we should hear all his plans. What would you do, my nose, if the bear was seeking my life? I would smell so sharply that I could warn you of his coming while he was still afar off. What would you do, my tail, if the bear was seeking my life? I would steer you so straight that you would soon get beyond his reach. Then the fox listened intensely and sniffed the air suspiciously. I must be off. Danger is near, he said. So he ran and ran until he left the mountains with the ice and snow behind. At last he came to a man mending a boat beside the river. Lend me your boat that I may cross over to the other side, the fox requested. Don't bother me, the man said gruffly. I'm busy. But I need your boat to cross over this river, the fox said as he sat on his hind legs and looked up into the man's face. Stop your silly chatter, the man ordered. Stop it, I will give you a bath in the water. Oh, I wish I had a boat. I wish I had a boat, the fox cried. Then the man jumped up, seized the fox by the tail, and threw him far out into the stream. It happened that there was a little island near where the fox fell, and he scrambled out on that. After shaking the water from his fur, he sat down and called, Hasten, hasten, O fishes, and carry me to the other side. Immediately, the fishes left the pools where they had been lurking and hurried to see who could get to the island first. I have won, the pike shouted. Then he said to the fox, Jump on my back, and I will carry you to the other shore. No, I thank you, the fox responded. Your back is too weak. I should break it. The eel wriggled to the front and said, Try mine. You are too slippery, the fox objected. I would slide off and be drowned. You won't slide off my back, the perch said, coming forward. Good gracious, no, the fox exclaimed. Not while you have such a spiny fin right in the middle of it, but I would be very uncomfortable. At this moment, a fine salmon swam up and said, Well, you can have no fault to find with me. You are the person I want, the fox said. Come close to the shore so I can get on your back without wetting my feet. The salmon swam as near the island as he could, and the fox stepped carefully on his back and was carried swiftly to the opposite bank. I think the fox must still be on that side of the river, for I have never heard of his returning. End of chapter 25 Recording by Adam Wilkins End of A Book of Fairy Tale Foxes by Clifton Johnson